Hi, this is Dr. Doresti with the Cranial Release Technique, back with another mobile video in the car, out and about in Long Island, New York. Beautiful day, nice weather, can't ask for anything else. I did receive a very interesting email that's a subject that I have not discussed before that I would like to address right now, which is when I am applying the cranial release technique, what is it that I am feeling or feeling for? And what is it that the patient is feeling? And so I wanted to just address that briefly. So if you've been following the videos, virtually regardless of what the patient is complaining of or is not complaining of, whatever symptoms the patient has or doesn't have, the cranial release technique corrective procedure is going to be exactly the same in theory on every patient. Now the art of getting the cranial release technique correct is that every head is slightly different. So when you apply this technique from patient to patient to patient, in theory, it's the same exact technique, and it may look the same from the casual observer, but I can tell you as the practitioner, there's slight modifications that have to be done in order to achieve the proper correction. Let's just leave it at that. So when I'm there, and I'm holding the patient's head for, say, 30 20 to 30 seconds on one side, 20 to 30 seconds on the other side. You many times will feel things in the head. You will feel with some patients the head going through an expansion and contraction phase. You can actually palpate that. You can actually feel that. Again, the technique is done very gently. Typically, the patient is on the table face up, typically. And so as I'm holding the contact for the 20 to 30 seconds, sometimes it'll feel like you're just holding a bowling ball and you'll feel nothing. And other times you'll actually feel the cranium go through its gyrations, its movements, its, its unwinding effect. So Neither one is better for me as the practitioner. I couldn't care whether I feel it or don't. I want to make sure my other specific indicators are correct that I use to, to perform the cranial release technique. And that's all taught in the online training program. The second, the flip side of the question, the second part is, what about the patient? What are they experiencing? And again, that answer is different as well. There are some patients who will be laying there and I'll work on them 20 to 30 seconds on one side, 20 to 30 seconds on the other side, and they'll say, well, I didn't really feel anything. And then I'll go and repeat the test. That's why I like to do the pre and the post test. I'll go and repeat the test. The legs are balanced. The muscle tension is more balanced. The muscle strength has increased bilaterally, side to side. When they get off the table and start walking around, all of a sudden they're like, whoa, something definitely has changed. Many times they'll say something like, the room just got brighter. Many people will say, I have a funny taste in my mouth, almost a metallic type taste in my mouth. possible theory is they're detoxifying. They have metals in their system and now it's it's coming up to the surface. It could be what's in their mouth from, from amalgam fillings. There's all sorts of different theories out there. I don't know which is correct, but I do know there are a percentage of, of patients that when I do the CRT, especially the first few times, they'll say, I have a very, they'll go, I have a very metallic taste in my mouth. At the end of the day, I, I, as the practitioner, am looking for change. I'm looking for something to change. 
what have I really done when that patient, between the time that patient comes into the office and leaves the office? Was anything done at all? That's why I, if you go back into the, another video, we talk about the pre and the post testing. How do you know that you got the CRT correct? Other patients will say something like, wow, I felt that in my knee, exactly where the doctor said I need to have surgery. Other people will say, I felt that in my toe, where I have a bunion. Other people will say, I felt that in my eyeball. I felt that in my tooth. Very, very specific, specific pinpoint accuracy of what they're feeling and where. A common one will say, wow, my foot just got hot. And again, there's a very simple neurological reason for that when you balance them from sympathetic fight or flight back to parasympathetic. I'll never forget, it was probably 10 years ago, I was in Las Vegas at a, a Parker chiropractic seminar, and a young chiropractor came up to my booth complaining of severe varicose veins. I don't think, that, I don't think he was 30 years old. Severe varicose veins in my right leg, he said. He was a surfer. He practiced chiropractic in California, Southern California. I put him on the table. I did my CRT. Same as everybody. I checked him. There was positive findings, short leg, some other tests that we do. Did the cranial release. He got off the table and he said to me, wow, very strange. That same leg where I have the varicose veins, it feels very warm. It feels like someone just poured hot water inside my leg. I said, that's great. That means things are changing. This was 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll say, if memory serves me right. I said, come back 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let me recheck you. Remember, if I'm only with someone for one or two or three days and they have real issues, I might see them every day, and I might even see them more than once in a day. And this gentleman, I wanted to see. I wanted to, I wanted to put this to the test. I wanted to see what might happen. I said, come back around 3 o'clock. That was 10 o'clock in the morning. About 11 o'clock in the morning, he came back. He said, no, I told you to come back. I, I told him. I said, I said 3 o'clock. He said, no, no, I got to tell you what's going on. I said, what's that? He said, not only is my leg hot, he said, my leg is sweating. My Only my right leg is sweating profusely. And he actually had shorts on, and you could see sweat dripping down his leg. He pulled his leg, he pulled his pants leg up, and you could see the sweat pour, dripping down his leg. Now, I had never seen that before. I said, fabulous. Come back at 3 o'clock. We're going to recheck you again. Three o'clock, he came back, all smiles, said, you know what? That sweating continued for about an hour. I don't feel that, that heat in my leg like I did when you initially did it. But take a look. He said, check it out, dude. That's exactly what he told me. Check it out, dude. My varicose veins are 50% better. That was about three hours later after the cranial release. Three, four hours later. How did it happen? Why did it happen? I have my suspicions as to why, but I saw it with my own eyes, and he saw it, and the last I heard, they're gone. He came back the next day, worked on them again. He came back the following day, worked on them again. He stayed in touch with me by email. He ended up taking the training back then, and as far as I know to this day, and that was at least 10 years ago, those varicose veins are gone. He's out there in California surfing, having a good time. And that's what, that's what can happen when you balance the nervous system. And remember, chiropractors in general balance the nervous system. Probably other people in different professions do too. 
But remember, when you go above the atlas, when you go to the cranium, you're at 80% of the nervous system. This was the missing piece that I always felt I was missing. In practice, good, good adjuster, good osseous adjuster. I would adjust people. I knew what I was doing. I knew how to do it. But I knew I was missing something. I was smart enough to know, hey, this is great, but I'm still missing something. And I'm not sure what that something is or where it is. And all roads led me back to the cranium. And that's how I got into cranial release. And that's where we are up until today. Okay, great. The website, cranialrelease.com. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and like the video so we can get this word out to more people. The website, cranialrelease.com. Again, one word, cranialrelease.com. There's a button there called Online Training Program. If you click on that, that'll take you to a different site. You can learn more about how do you learn this work in the comfort of your home or office. I have plenty of people now that are out there doing cranial release from the online training program, and you can do it too. Dr. Duresti with the cranial release technique saying, have a fabulous day, my friends. Balance the central nervous system and magic happens. It really does seem like magic. It's based on anatomy and physiology, but to the casual observer, it's magic. And it's a fabulous way to practice either as a standalone cranial release practitioner on your own, doing nothing else, or in conjunction with your chiropractic, your acupuncture, your massage, your reflexology, your naturopathic medicine, your traditional medicine, your dentistry, your whatever else that you currently do. If I were going back into practice today, 2023, May 2023, I would go back as a cranial release technique practitioner doing only cranial release because I know what's going to happen when you just do CRT. Works great with everything else. In my opinion, this is all I need to build and maintain and run a very successful practice, helping a ton of people, very low stress on me, very low stress on them. That's the way I want to practice at 62 years old. Dr. Duresti, cranial release. Enjoy, my friends. Hope to see you down the road. Adios. Goodbye.